I think the relationship between the two countries has been much more profound and complex and deep than, than the general public uh, perceives. Uh, America, the United States has been very important to Mexico, but Mexico has also has been very important for the United States. You have already, uh, within the United States, tens of millions of Mexicans. That, uh, whatever the, uh, the outcome of, of, of the immigration laws, this is something that uh, is there and is bound to be there. To ignore that part, of, uh, uh, to ignore Mexico now is not only to ignore your neighbor, but it's also to ignore a part of yourself. It's not different from, it's not different at all. Only a racist outlook uh, considers it, can consider it uh, different from the big waves of immigration that you had here of Polish, Irish, Jewish, Italian, whatever, uh, that made this country. For Latin Americans, you know that. And we, we, have, we have always been very good at blaming the United States for our, for our, for our problems, no? I, I don't, uh, I mean, it's, it's a huge subject. I am, let's say that the foreign policy of the United States hasn't been very wise in Latin America through the ages. But having said that, mm. Uh, there, are, uh, there are many things we have to do to to, to, to put our, ha our our house in order in Mexico. But awareness in the United States, I mean priorities. Okay, so the United States has a big priority co confronting terrorism. But look, I mean, talking about historical mistakes, just look, you have spent. I don't know how many trillions of dollars in a war. A war in Iraq where, where there weren't any uh, um, weapons of, of, of mass destruction. Just imagine if one tiny part of that attention and, and, and money and attention, first of all, would have focused on, the, on this continent. Let's make America a better continent for the first time in 200 years, you have almost all countries in Latin America are democratic. So the United States has here a continent where, oh, for the first time, the, the old dream is here, except Cuba, but it's moving, it's moving slowly. In 100 years, it, ha it will happen. Uh, the, uh, moving towards having a kind of federation of democracies that, of course, the United States does not look southwards. There's something here. Um, only looks southwards when it has conflicts that explode. They are very reactive, uh, uh, very reactive foreign policy, very short-sighted. Short uh, it's like a psychology of a fireman. You, know? you only you, you only react when there's fire. Why, why not prevent it? No, uh, and uh, it's not the idea of having a a, 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 a modern, democratic, uh, prosperous continent. It, it, it would be a wonderful idea to to, to, to just to. Uh, now, how to help? I mean, we concretely uh, think of Colombia. Let, let me give concrete examples because I, I don't want to to sound abstract. In Colombia, you have one of the most exemplary cases of democratic uh, life. A very violent country, but a democratic one has always been democratic. Colombia has had elections every four years since the mi middle of the 19th century. <coughs> okay, Colombia. And yes, they are pro-American. They have opened their arms to American help in the drug of uh, war on drugs. And it has 
succeeded in many ways. Not totally, but it has succeeded. But look, the United States has not signed a, 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 a free trade agreement with, with Colombia. What better thing, in, in order to counterbalance uh, Hugo Chavez, what better thing could the United States do than to sign a free trade agreement with Colombia? Just imagine a very, very prosperous, a, comp a wonderful, progressive Colombia there. Well, it hasn't happened. Again, short-sightedness. For all these reasons, the main message is know thy neighbor, because thy neighbor is within yourself.